Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined today by Jamie Zimmerman, who is a Senior Program Officer for Financial Services for the Poor for Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Jamie, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. I wanted to ask you about um, your work at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let's talk about security challenges. What does the foundation see as the main security challenges uh, facing digital financial services and fintech uh, for financial inclusion? At the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the financial services for the, for the poor team, we are really focused on ensuring safe and robust financial access for everyone. Um, and we're seeing so much innovation, uh, lots of new technologies, uh, new products and services, new infrastructure, new systems that are being built, and we're so excited about that. At the same time, with that comes a lot of new threats and challenges um, and unknowns about security. And we see lots of different ways in which security threats um, and potential risks can come into the system. And uh, it's hard to say uh, that p some are potentially so much more severe than others. Uh, there are lots of different ways in which security threats can uh, cause risk to a, a poor person, to a community, um, to an entire system. And so uh, it's hard to identify just one. Um, at the same time, you know, when we think about some of the big security threats that we're seeing uh, within financial and ICT infrastructure um, around cybersecurity, um, around vulnerabilities uh, from not just from the technologies um, and also the products and services that are being layered onto those technologies. And I think one thing that we're quite, quite concerned about uh, is uh, the systemic risks that, that are possible when you start to have all of these different types of innovations and we don't know where different threats could be coming from. Um, so we're quite concerned about the risks to the infrastructure itself and to the systems that really need to be strong and reliable um, in order for them to work really well for the poor particularly in countries, I suppose, which are using old technology, older networks, and so the system is much more vulnerable? Yeah, and it's, and it's, uh, it's in part about the system itself. Um, the maybe they're old systems, um, and now we're trying to layer new technologies onto them. Um, but it could also be uh, the, the threats in what we don't know about governing those systems. And so perhaps the technology itself has some vulnerabilities, and we need to address that in how we create technology. But we also need standards and rules and regulations that govern those technologies. Um, and we, right now, there's so much we don't know. Uh, and so it makes creation of uh, not only the tools to ensure really strong technologies, but also kind of the uh, the foundations uh, governing those things, uh, governing those systems to be strong enough to protect people um, and protect the systems uh, as they as we innovate on them. So it's a little bit of both. It's the technologies, uh, the and so the kind of the rails that we're creating, and it's also the rules that'll govern those rails. And your essentially, in, uh, your aim is to promote digital financial inclusion. That's You're right. looking to make sure that people are, uh, are really involved in, in the, this uh, new world in terms of uh, making their digital uh, financial transactions using their mobile phones. That's right. But you're obviously tr making sure that people don't get derailed and that their 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 trust is is within the system itself. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I th you know I th what we see in all of the potential value of being financially included and the opportunity that digitization provides to people to um, have more reliable, um, f uh, closer access to their resources, easier ability to transact, um, to take out a loan, um, to send money home um, or to another country uh, as a remittance, you know, all of those things are so much easier through digital. At the same time, um, there's now a greater threat of fraud, um, apps that, that uh, don't work, connect connections that break, that uh, lead to uh, lack of consumer confidence in the system, and also potentially more risky vulnerabilities, like la la not just the loss of confidence, but loss of, of funds. And so we want to ensure that as we promote uh, digital financial inclusion for everyone, particularly the poorest and most vulnerable, that at the same time we are uh, very seriously 
uh, analyzing and addressing any of the potential risks that could be coming from those systems um, and the products and services too. Now security and data privacy are obviously going to be, be playing a key role in winning consumer confidence and, and catalyzing the adoption of fintech for financial inclusion. Uh, I just really wanted to, to, to ask for your perspective on this really and uh, if that, that is the case, you know, how are you going to encourage that? Yeah, I, absolutely. It's, uh, consumer confidence is critical. Um, there's no way that we're going to achieve uh, meaningful usage of digital financial services um, or even the adoption of even at, the, at a base level if there's not trust in the system um, or if there are concerns about data privacy breaches um, or misuse of, of that data. Uh, and so really strong systems uh, and, and infrastructure is required, but so are uh, rules and regulations that are going to standardize the way uh, that we govern these systems and um, use the data uh, and protect the privacy of consumers and ensure that it's not going to be mishandled or misappropriated for any sort of nefarious reasons. Um, so it's, it is absolutely critical uh, if we ignore risks of data privacy and security, then we really run the risk of erosion of consumer confidence and increase in consumer risks. Um, and that, I think, um, would defeat the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. So we take it quite seriously. So but yeah, the message really has to go, come across to the, to the telcos and also telecom pr pr providers there and also to the, the financial service companies as well. That's right. It's it's multi-pronged for sure. Uh, in the digital world, it's not just the telcos or the financial service providers. These are uh, now two systems that are working together, um, and they uh, and so that collaboration between them uh, and the coherence kind of in in and uh, collaboration in the in the systems that they use and the products and services that they're offering and that they're partnering to de to co-develop um, is is really critical and so. In forums like the ITU, uh, the security clinics that we're here for this week, where we can bring together the ICT practitioners, the telcos, um, the technologists that are working on the tools to help to mitigate the risks, but also the financial services regulators um, and others that are really looking at the rules that are governing access can come together and, and find uh, that common ground for where they need to collaborate, uh, the problems that they need to, to solve together, and have a, a really great mechanism for achieving that. What role can international organizations like ITU play to enhance security in digital finance and fintech? So the international organizations, in particular um, considering the ITU, uh, has an incredible convening platform and voice uh, to bring to bear in digital financial inclusion, particularly around the infrastructure um, and ensuring safe and reliable uh, technology, connectivity, um, and, this, and this space, like I was just saying, um, to bring together stakeholders from many different sectors, uh, the policymakers within the ministries of ICT, uh, those working with the financial institutions, and then the operators, the telco providers, and the other security professionals and practitioners, having them all come together and advance a common purpose and uh, prioritize you know, at the cutting edge of what we need to do to uh, ensure that the systems that are being created, um, the infrastructure that we're building, everything that we're going to layer on top of it is done in a way that is actually going to transform people's lives. I think ITU um, has been doing this uh, through the work with the Financial Inclusion Global Initiative and before uh, with their work with digital financial services um, for some time and it's proven quite successful and we've been so thrilled to partner partner with the ITU to move this forward um, and partner with them uh, in the last couple of years. Now there are still billions of people that are not uh, connected, not using digital financial services and obviously you're trying to encourage uh, the poorest end of the, the, the spectrum to, to get, get, mm -hmm. uh, get connected. What do you think is going to encourage them most? Um, I think that what will encourage the poor the most is accessibility and utility. So uh, it has to be uh, 
easy and relevant in their in their lives, um, and and it has to be trustworthy. So. I, there might be something at a distance that seems like could be interesting, but it's at a distance and I don't have the time um, with all of the other things happening in my life to go and seek that thing out. So it has to be accessible and close. But even if, there's, if it's accessible, I need to be able to use it. It needs to be relevant to me and I need to be able to trust that it's going to be there for me uh, when I need it. And so I think that those elements are all part of the menu of things that have to come together for it to really work uh, for the most vulnerable, most marginalized, perhaps um, most uh, uh, distant populations. Uh, and, but with the technologies that, are, uh, that we're seeing today and the innovations that are coming um, and with all the work that, uh, that is happening to ensure that these systems and products and services are not only accessible, but are reliable, are trustworthy, um, uh, are high quality. I think that we're going to get there and, uh, and we're going to get there soon. And on the flip side, the, the digital financial service providers, are they interested in these little um, micro uh, clients there? They're then we're not talking about large sums of money with some of the people, of course, if they, if they are, if they are um, like, you know, uh, like you say, you're, you're the, the poorest of the poor on that. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose I would point to examples like what we've seen um, in the last couple of years in India, what we've seen in China, um, what we're seeing coming out of the big global platforms like Facebook and Alibaba and Google. Um, they're developing massive systems uh, that are bringing millions, in some cases billions of people online and, en and enabling them to transact and, uh, and manage their financial resources in a digital way. Um, I think that if we look at the direction they're headed, I think it's a pretty good indication of market viability um, of this segment. So that's my answer to that. Okay, and do you think there will be a time in the future where we won't be using cash anymore, or that all the transactions will be online, or will be digital? Um, no, I don't, actually. <laughs> I think I, I, I may have a certain point of view that I don't think that cash will always be king, necessarily, um, but I don't think that we'll ever have a time in which cash is completely irrelevant in the world. Um, and, I, and it's not the Foundation's position to um, promote cashlessness. Um, I think what we're promoting is access to uh, f services that are going to be most relevant, most meaningful for, to the poor. And if it happens to be that in certain situations it, that remains cash because the systems aren't there yet, then we would not argue ag against that at all. Um, but we believe that increasingly we're going to have systems that will include everybody. And once we do, everyone will have the option to decide um, how they want to live their financial lives um, and whether that's in cash or digital. And we think that we have a hunch that digital will be chosen, but cash will not go away completely. And hopefully in a, in a safe and secure manner, especially after the next few days here where you're going to be uh, looking at the reports and all the findings and, uh, and all the hard work that's been, been done yeah. over the last year. Absolutely. Great. So, I mean, Jamie Zimmerman, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.